This video is brought to you by Ageless Geeks. Cowabunga dudes and dudettes, this is Anthony, aka Batbomb82, and today I'll be doing a review of the Mezco 112 Collective, A Clockwork Orange, Alex DeLarge. Now, taking a look at the front, we can see that the figure is showcasing your standard 112 box, done in an orange motif, with a Clockwork Orange logo printed at the center, and Alex DeLarge's names printed at the top. Turning the box around, we can see multiple images of Alex surrounded by his multiple accessories and in different multiple opposing positions. So with the box out of the way, let's crack this figure open and see what we have inside. And here's Alex out of the box. And this is another really cool figure from Mezco. I absolutely love when they do pieces like this. That's out of the norm for your standard superhero. I think he is a very cool character from a very cool movie and I absolutely love what Mezco has done with this. He's got really cool interchangeable parts and I absolutely adore his accessories. I think this will be a great addition to any of your Mezco collections. But before we take a closer look at the figure, let's take a look at the accessories. So Alex does come with a good amount of accessories. Starting off, he comes with three interchangeable head sculpts, his cane, a cane knife, a glass of milk, and seven interchangeable hands. And lastly, he also comes with the orange circular base stand with Alex's image printed atop. He also comes with a clear articulated arm that articulates at four points with a clip. So with the accessories out of the way, let's take a closer look at Alex DeLarge. All right guys, now let's take a closer look at Alex. Now this is one figure that can probably be considered a hit or a miss uh, for a lot of collectors, especially for the Mezco 112 line, uh, because he's not a super popular character, um, and he, he's kind of niche in, in that way, because not a lot of people even like the Clockwork Orange movie. Uh, I personally enjoyed it just because it was so weird, and yeah, so I had to pick this up because it's a very unique piece of my collection, and that's a big part of why I love it so much. Now, Mezco has done a really good job with this guy. I think he looks fantastic. Uh, the soft goods are done pretty well uh, throughout the entire figure. He's almost wearing like a full-on bodysuit done in that white. My only thing is I'm, I'm worried he's going to get dirty, you know, or stains are going to end up happening at some point. Uh, and then it's going to kind of ruin the soft goods. But everything looks really nice. I love the suspenders right here. That just work. They actually work really, really well. They're on just a little stretchy band. So you can pull those down if you like. He's got his little crotch cod piece right here, which is very interesting. Uh, that is a more sculpted plastic. Uh, he's got some really nice combat boots that look really, really good. Uh, I love the detail on those, on the little straps and buckles and laces and things like that. All look really nice. What I do like is that he actually has his... Uh, his little, a little eyeball, uh, what do you call it? Uh, oh shoot, now I'm forgetting what they're called. Um, oh my gosh, I'm totally drawing a blank. Uh, cufflinks, you know, that's kind of what those are on the little sleeves right there. You got that one, the the brown eye with the red around it like that. And then, as I said, you got the blue eye with the red around it like so. I think that's pretty cool. I love that they actually did that with this particular figure because I think that turned out great. Uh, one thing I will note with this figure that's a little weird and a slightly off-putting, but it might be a little nitpicky, uh, every here and then you can kind of see right, right there, uh, kind of on the top right here, uh, right here on the sleeve, there are little threads kind of sticking out uh, all throughout this figure and I don't really want to pull any of those threads because I might tear up the fabric. Uh, that that could be an issue. Uh, some people might not even think that's a big deal. And it's really not, but it is something to note because on my figure, it is fairly, fairly noticeable that there are a lot, a lot of threads sticking out of this figure. So either way. So the head sculpts look fantastic. I think that looks great. I think it's a beautiful head sculpt. I, I love how that turned out with the hair and the eye paint. Around. It was like a lashes painted on around that one eye. His uh, hat just looked, what is it, a derby? Just looked fantastic. So we do get three interchangeable head sculpts. 
So we got the standard head. This is the one that uh, didn't come packaged in the box. And I do really like this one a lot. I think it looks a lot like the actor. Uh, we also do get this battle damaged head where he's just completely messed up, bloody and whatnot, and bandaged up. Uh, battle damaged faces, I think, is something where Mezco really shines because they really get the brutality in there. And I think they did a great job of that. The hair all tattered and whatnot looks fantastic. Uh, we also do get his masked head with that really creepy mask, uh, with that really long, creepy nose, and it's just very weird, and I love it, and they did a really good job with that. The paint on that looks fantastic, and just a very cool piece. Uh, so how the head is attached, it's not a ball joint, uh, but it is attached at the neck. Now, I know some people don't like that, uh, but for me, it's not a really big deal. You can just take another head and pop that in, and now you have something like that, and that looks really cool, man. I love that battle damage head. All these heads look really, really good. Uh, they just did a really good job with that. So we also do get uh, interchangeable hands. We do get a pair of closed fisted hands. Uh, those are the ones that come packaged in the box. Uh, we do get two gripping hands. Those are for holding his accessories like his cane and his cane knife. Uh, and then we do get uh, some more open palm hands. Those are more for relaxed and whatnot. And then we do get a hand for uh, holding his uh, glass of milk. Uh, and that's kind of open palm, but it is a little loose. Uh, loose enough to grip that glass of milk. So the glass of milk actually works out very nice. It's just this little plastic like that, uh, and then you can see the milk in there. So how you interchange the hands is you just unplug like so, and I love Mezco hands because again, they're always kind of a little gummy, uh, while the peg is a little more stiff. So because of that, the peg, uh, excuse me, the hand itself uh, tends to adhere to the peg a little bit better. And I have noticed that the hands uh, on uh, this particular figure are a little more stiffer than what I'm used to. And once you get them on there, they work out great. So you can just take that glass of milk and it holds in there perfectly. And I think that looks great. That's a really cool uh, accessory that we got with this figure. If you guys know the movie, you're gonna know all what these accessories mean and what their scenes are from. And I just think that's fantastic. I love that a lot, works out great. So we can take that hand off right there. I'm gonna put on back his a, uh, gripping hand uh, because we do get his cane. His cane looks fantastic. Just a straight black with that ball head at the top like that. And he can hold that in his gripping hands like so. And that works out really, really good. That is a very, uh, that's one of the main accessories you wanna have with this figure. And I think they did a good job. I love the polished black that they have with here. So what I do like, now one thing I kind of wish he does come with his uh, his knife handle for the cane, and that looks really good too. Nice polished silver and whatnot. Uh, I kind of wish it would have been an actual removable accessory. Uh, you know what I mean? So you could actually remove it and then just store it. But they opted to make it a, a separate piece. Now that's okay because uh, it still works and whatnot. He can hold that in like so. And now you got his, his little knife cane, his cane knife and whatnot. Uh, but I kind of wish they would have been able to actually separate this handle piece from the stick and have it as one whole thing that we could kind of just store both. Uh, but I imagine that would have been kind of tricky since it's a very thin uh, piece of plastic and uh, probably would have been a little difficult to do because this knife here does feel a little thicker than the actual cane itself. So that's probably why they didn't do that. So... Okay, very, very cool. I love the way this figure looks. The accessories are awesome. Uh, I've had people express that it should have came with a certain uh, sculpture of a certain man's private part. That would have been funny, uh, but I can see why Mezco didn't do that. So anyways, so let's take a look at the articulation here. So that neck is on a ball joint, so that rolls around very, very nice. Does turn left and right, up and down, pivot side to side, very nice. Arms can go all the way up and full 360 if you really wanted to. Go out about that far. Uh, it does rope in that ball peg, so we get a single bend at the elbow, rotation at the elbow, rotation at the wrist, as well as a hinge at the wrist. Uh, we do get a ball peg. It seems to be a double ball peg, but it doesn't work all that well, so it really kind of rolls around a little bit in the lower section. Pivot side to side a very, very little, and crunches back and forth a decent amount. It's not a ton, but it's decent. Uh, I do wish there was more range in there. We got hip joints that kick forward that much, back about that far, can do the splits that far, which is actually pretty nice, rotation in the upper thigh, we got double double jointed knees, rotation at the boot, uh, ankles go up and down, rotate and a very decent ankle rocker. So overall I think this is a really cool figure and the fact that it's just very unique uh, and it's stuff like this that I love about, <clears throat> about the 112 collective line is that 
you know, I know a lot of the figures are the, that are going to be most popular are going to be the superheroes, and I absolutely adore those too. But I love the fact that we get these figures as well. Uh, something that are more obscure and whatnot, and like I said, to be a little niche, they're going to fit in with those superheroes, and it's going to be all one just solid collection. So for that thing reason alone, I really love this figure, and I think he is definitely a must-get. So for a quick size comparison, here he is standing next to a Marvel Legends Deadpool figure, as well as a DCUC Batman figure. And for your Mezco comparison, here he is standing next to a Mezco 112 Collective Deluxe Joker and Evil Dead 2 Ash. And just for fun, here he is standing next to a little Lego Bat Bomb. So there it is guys, my review of the Mezco 112 Collective, A Clockwork Orange, Alex DeLarge. Now overall, I really do think this is an awesome figure from a very unique film. I absolutely love it when Mezco gives us figures like this. I think that they did a great job with the sculpt, paint, accessories, and soft goods. However, I do worry that the white of his clothing might get dirty or stained over time, and his torso articulation does lack quite a bit. I think he would be a very cool figure because he would be a standout piece, and at the same time, I can totally get why you wouldn't want him for collection. Maybe he doesn't fit in, and maybe you just hate that movie. With those things aside, I think he's still very cool, and I think he is definitely a must-get. So I give this figure a rating of... Three and a half bat bombs out of five. And if you're on Facebook, head over to my group, the Mezco 112 Collective Collectors for all kinds of Mezco goodness. So please comment, like, and subscribe. Stay nerdy, my friends. Peace.